Yo, what is going on guys? Time Stopper here, coming back at you another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, in this video, we are going to be talking about Sathalia versus the Sand Devil, and she can solo it, and you can farm food at the same time. Yeah, that's right. Most efficient farming we have found so far, and it's easy to build. Crazy easy, actually. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, guys, so first and foremost, I got to give a big shout out for where I found this over on YouTube. You know, I was trolling around looking for teams, trying to figure out what all we could do. And I stumbled upon a Russian YouTuber that does raid videos. Now, you guys may already know this guy, but you may not know that you know him. You may have seen his avatar in game. Right here is what his avatar looks like. He is one of the original raid content creators and back then they actually gave you the ability to get your own avatar most of them have quit at this point but he still plays the game actively because i run up against him all the time and that is a youtuber by the name of riddick so i'll go ahead and put his youtube channel up here on the screen real quick so you can see that his channel is all in russian so if you want to go give him a, a quick follow, you know, I can't understand any of the stuff that's going on in the videos, but he does a great job of showing the team breakdowns and their stats and everything. And he gave me some inspiration for a team, and that is going to be Sathalia versus the Sand Devil. Now, I knew that there had to be some stuff out there somewhere, just wasn't sure where it was going to be at. And we've actually gone ahead and found a, a, a pretty efficient way to farm this dungeon. So when I say efficient, you know, a lot of times people are looking for the fastest way and stuff like that or trying to get the fastest team. And of course, there's a lot of stuff out there right now with unkillable teams for stage 25 that kind of take a long time and stuff like that. But here today, we're going to be talking about how you can farm this dungeon in an efficient manner on one of the lower levels and do it while farming food at the same time. Now, if you look at this cost analysis breakdown here that I got from, I guess Cold Brew did a video on it, and it's gonna show us each stage and how many energy per potion that it's going to cost us. So we can kind of take a look at where the breakdown is and where it's gonna make the most sense, which stages are gonna make the most sense for us to farm. So you can see that anywhere past stage 14, the lesser potions always stay at 11. So as you go up and start spending more energy, your efficiency is going to go down for lesser potions. We already know that you need massive amounts of lesser potions, so we know that this is actually a pretty good place to farm. Now, also with your medium-sized ones, your greater potions, you can see over here, as you change the energy per run, it's going to change where it's at. Today, we're going to be talking about how to farm stage 15. So as you can see on stage 15, we're going to get 0.79 lesser per energy. So it's actually the best possible result for lesser per energy. And for greater per energy, it's 0.32. It's not the absolute best. It looks like that's going to be stage 24, but it's not terrible either. And we're going to be farming some of those. And at the same time, you're going to be able to farm four food champs with it. Now, how do we do that? It's actually a really, really simple build for Sathalia. Haven't used Sathalia in forever. So I want to go ahead and first take a look at the run and what we're talking about here. Again, we're going to go over to stage 15. This is a spirit affinity level 14 energy. So Sathalia is magic affinity, which means that she is going to be able to strong hit and it is going to weak hit her. And then I've just got four food champions that I threw in there. Now, if we look at the team setup for this, super easy. Obviously, you're not going to want to be doing this with like level one champions or anything like that because you have to swap them all the time. So maybe like three star champions, four star champions, because you are going to need to go in here and lock out Sathalia's A3. Now, the reason that we're going to lock out her A3 is because we want her doing her A1 and her A2 that many more times, and the A3 just doesn't give us any kind of bang for our buck. 
you don't need to have her booked, which is going to be one of the reasons that this is such an awesome comp for you to do it budget-wise. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to do it with very low-level champions because the, that food is just going to take forever. You're going to have to be redoing it. So because right now her HP burn is only 50% chance to land, and you can only land HP burns or debuffs when he's sleeping, sometimes it's going to take a moment for it to get into that rotation for her to actually get the HP burn placed on the Sand Devil. You can see, obviously, he already did his wipe earlier, wiped out everybody. We've got the HP burn up now. He cleanses it off. It does some damage. You can see that she's doing a great job of keeping herself fully healed because she's the only one alive in the fight. So even though her A2 has a target to heal a ally, since she's the only one there, she's always going to heal herself. She's also going to always put up the block debuffs. Now, I haven't run into any issues so far, and I've run it probably about 50 times already where the decreased speed lands on her and that messes her up because of the speed at which we're going at. So I don't know if that could be a problem, but I haven't seen it become one yet. So doing this unbooked, um, she has masteries on her at the stats we're going to use her at. It's taking right now about five minutes to do this run. So five minutes, stage 15, with food isn't really bad when you think about it. Now, could this be faster? Yes, obviously we could put books into her, but I'm not going to do that outside CBC if I don't have to. And obviously I can beat it without it. The other way you could help this obviously would be to get Brimstone. So if we could get her to apply Brimstone when the Sand Devil is sleeping, that would be additional damage as well that we would be picking up. How much, I don't really know because I don't have it to place it on there to even take a look at it. So again, it's going to be a lot of RNG. It's going to look like we're not doing a ton of damage and it's going to take forever. But when she does place the HP burn on the Sand Devil, it's going to be a big, big difference. You can see that he's doing damage to her enemy max HP. It's dropping her, you know, overall HP possible. But when she heals herself, she heals herself all the way up and boom, all of her HP is all the way back already. So this run looks like it's going to be taking a little bit longer. She's having a tough time placing that HP burn. So I'm going to speed up through this fight and I will bring you guys back when this is done and we'll talk about the build and how you're going to go about setting this up. All right, well, that was about the worst RNG we could have asked for. Go figure. You record a YouTube video and she misses every single HP burn. But again, mine's not booked. So, you know, that's obviously a bigger chance. But I'll go ahead and throw up a, one, a run that I did earlier here. If you take a look, you can see that this one here is only five minutes. So definitely can be done in quicker fashion. It just didn't happen for me this time. It's all going to be RNG based. And of course, this is not a speed run. This is more for efficient farming. This is like, hey, I want to farm it overnight. I want to farm it with some food at the same time. I want to get some potions. I'm not a super whale that is going to drop 10,000 energy on this thing, but I do kind of want to do both at the same time. This is a good way to get it done. If you can get this down to, I'm guessing you could probably get it down to maybe three to four minutes if you had brimstone on her 
and you were actually landing your HP burns, unlike me, because mine isn't booked out. Speaking of the build, let's go take a look at how we have her built real quick. Super easy build to do. Now, there's a couple different ways you could actually build her out on this. If, if we look at how mine is built, I have her built in a regen set right now just because I have a ton of regen gear. I have tested it with two sets of Immortal. It did work with two sets of Immortal as well, so you maybe don't need to re use regen gear, but this gear is not like crazy high for stage 15 anyway. If you take a look, we have her at 337 accuracy to make sure she's able to land that HP burn. We have her above 250 speed. That seems to kind of be the sweet spot. It looks like I was a little bit losing some speed there, so I might want to go a little bit higher. You're going to automatically get some more speed from the food dying, and we'll talk about that when we look at the masteries. And then you just want her to survive. So right around 79, 80,000 or more HP is usually good enough. I just told it that I wanted some defense, nothing special there. So you're looking for about 80K HP, 2,500 uh, defense, 250 speed, and 330 accuracy should get it done. As for masteries, to make this go a little bit faster, we're going down the support tree over here. We picked up the accuracy, the extra shields. We've got some increased healing and things like that. We basically took all the stuff that's going to increase our turn meter so that we're going faster. And then down here, of course, you have the spirit haste, increased speed for H for each ed dead ally. Because you're taking food champs in, you're automatically, they're going to die. So you're going to automatically get yourself 24 speed here anyway. Um, and then, of course, we did take Master Hexer for the chance to extend the HP burns. But I don't know if that was the best play. Looking at how many times she was landing HP burns, you might be better off trying to take Sniper for the extra 5% chance because right now she's at 50%. That would put her at 55. If I book her, she gets an extra 10% from books. So we could take her up to 65% chance to land that HP burn. So that would definitely make it more consistently shorter versus longer. And then over here on the offense tree, we did just take the life drinker to give her that extra HP when she gets low. And then we did take it down here. I don't know if you can see behind me there. We took it down to War Master just to get some extra damage on him, make it a little bit quicker and things like that. But most of it is based off of her HP burn. You could see there, I wasn't getting a lot of HP burns and it was taking kind of forever to land them. So not a crazy build or anything like that. I mean, I think I think this is pretty attainable for most people out there. Obviously, you do need Sathalia for this. There may be some other champs out there that can do this as well. I just saw her and kind of wanted to get this out to you guys. So if you find anyone else, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. Again, as we're coming out with more teams and stuff like that, it's awesome to share these comps out to the rest of the community. So if you have ones that you've seen or that you like, or maybe some ideas for some, let me know in the comments down below. Put it together, see if we can make it work. But guys, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. Of course, if you did like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and of course, as always, until next time, be good.